You are now tuned in to the freshest, the dopest, the one and only www.diggingday.com This is The Way Radio, broadcasting live from Northeast Los Angeles And as always, as always, we got special guests live in studio And today is no exception We got S9 live in studio S9, say what's up, homeboy What's up, G's? Welcome, 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 welcome Big up, big up Thanks for having me, Uh, it's a pleasure No, no doubt, brother, thank you, the pleasure's all ours Mm, Yes, sir So, uh, you're gonna be the first DJ for the year Starting it off right here on this oh, is the way snap. radio like that blessing blessing us with not only an interview but we will have a, the dj set available online for everyone that wants to check it out please do please but do. for those that want to know give us a little introduction of who is s9 Ooh, that's a loaded question okay let me simplify that uh s9 is an individual who is 100 percent enthralled with hip-hop to the point where it's an obsession and i've been like this since i was a kid uh big up to my older brother who introduced me to uh hip-hop through uh taking me to the theater go see crush groove oh word then after that it was a rap after that i was addicted to it for him it was a fad but for me it was like that's just stuck in my brain and stayed in my brain and i just and look back after that so nice nice so let's let's break it down brother you're you you are a man that plays many hats yes, w- sir. within the culture man mm-hmm. let's touch base on the first one you're a dj talk about that yeah i started a, a well before i de- <laughs> before i dj i tried to be boy but that was a failed career <laughs> sure why what happened i wasn't coordinated enough ah shit it happened it was like uh i was like that didn't for me Plus, my body hurts too much, <laughs> <laughs> which led into, oh, I always loved music. So music has always been a part of my life from my family. Um, my grandmother was a singer in Mexico City and my father always had music playing in the house. So uh, nice. After the failed B-Boy career, it just was like, well, music makes more sense. Plus, I always did art. I love cartoons and art. So it was a natural progression for me to be uh let me DJ and then let me let it lead into everything after hip- I learned what hip hop was. So, so you said you did you get the DJing from seeing Chris Groove or was it just something that always enticed no, you? No, it was just hip hop. Hip hop in general. The DJing came later on in my life when I first saw this gentleman. And so I'm from Merced, California. I was born in Mexico City, came to Los Angeles. My family moved up north to be further away from the border because at that time we were undocumented okay and uh fast forward to me being in junior high and all that and i was a latchkey kid during the reaganomic crack era um there was this dope dude in merced county called kid mix right Mm -hmm. and he was one of the first people that i ever saw like like he could cut Really? To this point, he. Uh, I listen. I, I think back. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but man, that guy was nice with it. He, like he he could do doubles. He could cut it up. He'd mix the records properly. Like it was like the shit you want to hear. Yeah. The shit you would hear on Wake Up Show or like big shows in New York. He did it, but he was local and nobody knew about him. But nobody appreciated him because you know what I mean. It's California, the Central Valley, and people just. Unfortunately, where I'm from, for as much as I love my area, they don't they don't completely get it. A lot of that stuff is out of their reach. Yeah. So he was on some shit back in the day. Nice. So yeah, I agree with you on that. If it's not LA, San Francisco, San Jose, exactly. Oakland, you know, if it's not those areas, yeah, San Diego, yeah. it's kind of like you you really gotta you really gotta push yourself to get out there and get known or get seen. I mean, yeah, you do. You, I mean, that's what I'm doing now. Um, that's why I call myself the 40 year old veterano rookie (laughs) i'm like the veterano rookie because it took 40 something years of my life for it to all make sense and really put to use what it is that i was doing all up until this point now word okay word and then when uh djing you got it from uh i'm sorry what was his name again dj kid kid mix kid mix but 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 that was the introduction there's people that actually mentored me and my mentor was chilzo which is he's still DJing and big up my dude Chilzo. He's on Twitch. Make sure you follow him, DJ Chilzo. And then my dude El Sun, uh, the Midnight Sun. He was the first person to be a DJ producer. He had like a oh no, so my dude Chilzo. He was the first person to also introduce me to like the EPS 
before the ASR ASR 10. Word. And then my dude Elson had like an NPC, but they were all both DJs, and they would always just they would let me bug them. Yeah. They would let me bug the fuck out of them all the time because I just they, I, I don't know what it was. And maybe they were like, man, this kid really wants it. Like I don't know what it is about this kid, but so they let me stick around. Nice. They were older than me. When did you start? When did you start? Uh, when you got into DJing, when did you start buying vinyl? Well, you know what's funny? I started buying vinyl before I had turntables in the really? mixer. Yeah, so uh, probably the end of '96, beginning of '97, and all the way up until '98, I think, is when I actually had my own turntables. Before that, I would just go to my homeboy's house or borrow somebody's decks to practice. Nice. What were you buying back in those days, man? Ah, oh, man, the same shit I'm buying now. Fucking hip hop shit, man. I didn't, you know what I mean? I'm gonna be straight up. Like, I know a lot of people pussyfoot around this shit and they let people or the industry or the culture on a popular level let them dictate what they say they like. Yeah. I didn't get into this for anything else but to make hip hop shit. Nice. It's the reality of it. If I do something else, that's cool. If not, not. But, like, hip hop is what I wanna do. I've always wanted to do it. This is all I've ever wanted to do. This is all I care about. Do I appreciate all other forms of music? No doubt. Hip hop's taught me that because hip hop encompasses all forms of music. You don't have another music that encompasses music from all genres like hip hop does. So for me, it was like a no brainer. And I didn't get into this doing anything else but hip hop. Nice. So. What was the What was the first vinyl you bought, if you remember? First piece of vinyl was Queen. And it was because of uh, Wayne's World. <laughs> oh, shit. I watched Wayne's World and uh, I was like, man, that sounds dope. What is that? Yeah. Which is crazy because I ended up going to this record store that DJ Shadow used to dig in. Uh-huh. Big up DJ Shadow. I'm big up my dude Pirate, rest in peace. Um, he had this dope-ass record spot in the Central Valley that was one of the best record stores worldwide, actually. He had, like, one of the best collections. I didn't know this until I got older. Really? But I used to go there because... They had the vinyl, so the vinyl was like massive. Like the section, like the the store was huge, and his collection was insane. But he was the kind of guy that if you're like, "Hey, I need this piece of vinyl," he's like, "Which one?" And he like walk in the midst of like a hundred records and pick that record out for you and be like, "Here you go." Yeah. He was that on point. Damn. He was also on the cover of Midnight in a Perfect World for DJ Shadow's cover because DJ Shadow used to go digging there. Damn, crazy crazy yeah go look up that cover like that's pirate right there rest in peace um unfortunately like when he passed away the city auctioned half his collection off and <laughs> that collection was insane i wish i was digging back then that just wasn't you know what i mean i was a kid i loved hip-hop but i just it just I hadn't clicked yet yeah when did it click for you for me uh i clicked uh 93 the year that um, Tribe Called Quest dropped Midnight Marauders and Wu Tang came out. That's when it clicked. It was nice. my eighth grade year into my ninth grade year. So it was like junior high school into high school, and that's when it clicked. So, what was it about those albums that, that clicked for you that was like, oh shit, like the ray of light just hit you? I'm like, boom, there it is. What was it about that, those albums? I mean, for me, it was to make a <laughs> well, I'll say this to make a long story longer. <laughs> it's uh i come from unfortunately not for, not fuck that i'm not gonna be apologetic about it i come from game banging background uh oh. not because i wanted to be a game banger or not because i think i'm a game banger but i grew up during the 1980s reaganomic crack era you know i mean we were latchkey kids my parents would go to work and they'd give us the keys to the house and said lock the door for everybody and don't let anybody in that you don't know and hear 10 bucks and make it last yeah yeah i mean and uh a lot of my homeboys that i grew up with ended up becoming game makers so they were all uh bloods and crips mostly bloods because i lived up north yeah um and i lost my train of thought what was the question again sorry question is what was it about those two albums that clicked for you to be like oh this is what i want to be in Okay, so I wanted to get away from all that, what I was just uh -huh. talking about. I wanted to get away from all the gaming stuff because it just didn't make any sense to me after a while. After a while, I had, luckily, I was around some good people that would, they would always tell me, like, this isn't for you. You know yeah. what I mean? This, you're not built for this. Not to say that they, I wasn't built for it. Like, I could handle it. They're like, 
you got a lot more potential. Take it somewhere else. That's what's up. Game banging ain't the shit for you. And yeah. those are real homies right there, man. They are, yeah. Real I mean, homies say that shit, you know. What that's I mean? and these are dudes that put in dirt. You know yeah. I mean? They they put in work, but they're like, you know what? I did this. I chose this, but this is for you. You don't you shouldn't pursue this like I did. Yeah. So those albums resonated with me because they were completely different from that life. I mean, they were East Coast. They were gangster with like the Wu Tang stuff was a lot more relatable as far as gang shit because I grew up with it. Yeah. But Tribe Called Quest more aligned more with my spiritual take on life and like seeing the light and positive of things. So it was a dope marriage of like, but at the end of the day, it was all hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, it was just something different. I grew up with wanting just game bang and G Funk and shit, and all of a sudden you just had these Grammy ass drums and samples and. It was just this articulation was dope as fuck and it's like i wasn't used to it so it was just like i was enthralled by it damn that's what's up and it took me back to a place where i was like ah, now i remember chris groove yeah that's where that's what they were talking about in that movie so it all like it all tied in eventually you know what i mean even with my gaming background which i wasn't 100 percent about it it's just, just it just wasn't me yeah i'm not built for that just not what i want to do right up how'd you get the name s9 so s9 comes from so i was born in 1979 so s9 is so s first letter is seven nine spelled out 79 but it's also um, a nod to the s950 which is a machine that dj premier pete rock uh, Lord Furness used for very iconic records. Yeah. So it's a not it's my actual birthday, but it's also a nod to my heroes. Oh shit. And my favorite machine is the Nakai, so S nine fifty. Oh so shit. So S nine yeah, it has nothing to do with the Pioneer mixer, which kinda like I had that name like ten years before that mixer and oh, now all I hear is like the mixer? <laughs> and it's like no, nah, not like that. But sure, I'll take it, whatever. <laughs> It's a little, it plays a little part of it. Plays a little part of it. I mean, if they gave me a free S9 mixer, shit, I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> you keep Pioneer, hey. Right? <laughs> Message. <laughs> I just give you some advertisement. Yeah. Anyways. So you've been, you were DJing. Uh, from what age, uh, from what age was that when you, you were like, all right, boom, this is, I'm S9 now. How long was that before S9 grew and then started venturing off into more hip hop related things? So. 93 is around the time where I like, was like, okay, this is what I like doing. Yeah. Like, I get, this is deliberate. Like, I'm into hip-hop deliberately. Yeah. Like, I'm doing, I was a graph writer, all right? Word uh, up. B-Boy didn't work out for me. I was just not coordinated. But I was in, always in art as a kid, so graffiti was like a natural progression for me. But then the music was also a tie-in for me. And um, it was around 96, 97 is when I was like, I didn't know that this is what I wanted to do, but I knew that I was obsessed with it, that I just did it on a regular basis as much as I possibly could. Yeah. As often as, like, how often, however often I could do this and be around it. And I was so obsessed with it that that's, this is all I wanted to do. Yeah. All right. And um, it was like 97, 1997, man, it was the year where I was like, and it didn't click 100% until about 2001, 2000. When I was like, am I going to go to graphic design school like I thought I was going to go? No. I was like, is there anything with music? And there was an audio engineering school. So I was like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to engineering school. And I went to Arizona. Uh huh. And it just, from there, it was, I never looked back. So for audio engineering, you're getting involved in the, the production side of it. Uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, yeah, I skipped a couple of steps. So I started DJing. And then my boy that taught me how to DJ also wanted to produce. Yeah. And I also, I mean, our my also my obsession was the music. You yeah. I mean? It's the bed. The music is what matters to me. You know what I mean, the vocals yeah. are secondary for me, even though they're prominent. But if the beat ain't right, and I I don't care how dope you are, if the beat sucks. It sucks. Yeah. The rest of the song sucks. Um. So around that time, he bought an MPC. Um. And I finally had got my own decks. Yeah. And he bought an MPC. And then around the time we just kind of learned together, we would take turns reading the 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 manual. The manual while he was on, and vice versa. I he I take a break and he I jump on the machine and 
and vice versa. And then we learned the machine like that. We learned nice. NPC 2000. Did um, you guys go by? A, did you guys go by a name as a group or anything like that? Or you guys were just fucking nah, just, we were just playing with it, seeing what you guys. We didn't even do? know it was. I mean, we, at that point, we didn't even know that this was could be a career. Yeah, it was more of like we love doing this. So that, that, I guess that's what we do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It really wasn't that we had an idea of like, oh, we're gonna make beats to sell shit. It was just like, yeah, why not do this if you love this? Yeah. You know what I mean? So then you're going to school. And then after that, I ended up going to school for engineering because prior to me going to school, we had been on the MPC learning a lot of stuff. Um, Then we met an MC and he took us, he brought us actually out here. Really? Um, His name is Hassan. And we had uh, some I do with producer beats. I did the, at that that point, I wasn't 100% sure that I was producing. So my dude would do the beats. His name's El Sun. And the rapper was Hassan. Uh-huh. And I used to go by Kai One. Which I don't know how I got that name. But <laughs> the homies named me that. So I I was a DJ. And around the time, I also started kind of feeling like, man, uh, I don't want to just do the cuts. Yeah. But nonetheless, uh, my dude uh, Hassan had been established because he had been already pushing. He was older than us, so he had already been pushing in here in LA trying to do stuff. So he knew like Newmark and all these people at Correct Records. Uh-huh. So he knew like all these people in the industry and shit. And um, he brought us out here to record. That was my first experience ever doing something. So when I was talking about like you know this is not what I want, I knew what I wanted to do. It, that was the first time that he actually took us and showed me that this could be something that we could do for real he brought us to the spot called defcon 4 where mom's the word from yeah he used to run uh the spot mom's the word big up the mind clouders mom's the word yeah two max he used to run the studio and he he let us record in there we did three songs on adat of all things yeah it's like i don't know young kids probably don't even know what their fucking a dad is <laughs> but it's basically a video cassette that records audio and you just stack it yeah and each video cassette has like four tracks a piece anyways we recorded my first single there and then i just remember walking out of that thing going i don't know what happened and i don't know what they did and i don't know what was like if they did anything to improve our sound but I never wanted to walk into another studio feeling like an idiot like I did that day because it was just like, I, I just feel so unprepared. Yeah. Which is what led me to go into school in Arizona. So let me ask you this. You said you you, you went in there unprepared. What, what, what about the studio when you went in there were you unprepared for? I mean, just because I didn't know that this was going to be something serious that we did. Like, yeah. Recording the studio wasn't really a plan that we had. It was just a natural progression that happened. But my man, Hassan, already knew he already had been at it for a while you know i mean he already yeah. had been dabbling with fucking with people in the industry and doing all these things and i didn't know that you know from i mean you grew up in the valley like the actual valley like not like the valley in la but yeah. like the central valley central valley yeah he, it, all that shit seems to us like foreign and so far out of reach that i just didn't get it i didn't get what he was trying to do but he was already doing it yeah and so when you brought us out there, I was like, oh, shit, like we're in the middle of like I, I remember going to Defcon 4 and the whole place was lined with autographs. And it's like dilated people's Alchemist, Rasco and all this shit that people that had recorded there. It's like, wow. Yeah. These are all my heroes at that point. You know what I mean? So that kind of made me go, oh, shit, this is real. You nice. Know what I mean? So when you went to production school, what what part of or what aspects of production did you take up at school? Uh, for just, me, it was, was audio engineering. Okay. I just didn't want to feel like an idiot. Yeah. And I also read a... I won't say who, what artist because I don't want to offend them. Anyways, I read an article from a prominent artist that I really enjoy as a producer. Yeah. And he made this statement of, by the time I get to the end of my project, it doesn't even sound like how I wanted it to. And I'm like, that sounds stupid. You have all this money your music should actually sound better yeah so i was like that means you have no control complete control over your creative sound and i didn't want to be that kind of person so i ended up deciding to go to school a because i got tired of paying a hundred dollars an hour and feeling like an idiot walking out of there not knowing if they did anything to my shit or just charging me a hundred bucks yeah crazy so i went to school for it 
Nice. And production and making the clarity of the audio. Basically, I went there just to make my shit make it sound like real good hip hop. Yeah. That's all I cared about. Damn, crazy. After that, after that, after you you graduate and, and you finish, you complete your audio engineering mm-hmm. education. What was next for you? You know, I didn't really know. Really? I didn't really know. Like, I went back home. I think uh, we did our internship a couple months after I graduated. I stayed in Arizona a little longer just because I didn't want to finish my internship. Yeah. And then we headed back. Me and my partner that I was, was my roommate was happened to be from my same town. So we headed back. And I just, I didn't know what to do with it. It was just like, we did this. There, It was fun. It was amazing. And I quickly came to realize, like, whatever I went to do, this place is completely not ready for that. Yeah. And not set up for someone like me to win here because it's so bumpkin and so backwards, even though I love the place. Yeah. It's a beautiful place. It just, it just, it just wasn't there yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I should have been in a place like LA, but at the time, mature wise, I wouldn't have been ready. So it wouldn't have worked out anyways. Yeah. So, anyways, I moved back. And I just didn't know what I was going to do. So I spent about a good two years just working regular nine to fives with a fucking degree and doing my music out of my bedroom and shooting demos out to every and any label I could send it to yeah, with or without their approval and just looking at the back CDs and being like, all right, I'm going to send it to them. So maybe they like it. Yeah. That's it. Crazy. So when was the, when was the, the come to Jesus moment where everything kind of was like, all right, now I got to fucking... Now I really got to do this. I don't know that I ever. Well, I'll say this. Prior, you guys want to get into this for real? It's up to you, man. It's your interview, man. Whatever I'm you want to say. Go ahead. Okay. So fast forward to about last year, January twenty eighth. So I spent my whole life doing music, pursuing it. Uh, I did my thing in Denver, connected with people like Rock Our Science, big up my dude Rocka, Dalit Peoples. Um, and a bunch of other people in the industry. Yeah. But to not make it get too complicated, fast forward to about January 28th. Uh, my mom passed away right before COVID, so I didn't handle that well emotionally. Uh-huh. And then I led to me drinking a lot unnecessarily. I don't think there's anything wrong with drinking, but I medicated with alcohol. Yeah. Which is the worst combination. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially if you're trying to do something important like music and really make it a career. Yeah. Um, so that happened. I ended up hanging out with some old friends that I shouldn't have been hanging out with. They were involved in some real shit. And uh, basically, my best friend stabbed me nine times. No shit. I got stabbed nine times in the abdomen, lacerated a uh, liver punctured lung and a severed uh, diaphragm and my whole uh, uh, intestines completely diced up yeah uh, I spent a week in ICU and a month in the hospital and then another three months recovering at home yeah and here I am so that's what that was what that was my Jesus that was become the Jesus where moment. you're like everything you've done for 40 something years has been it was like you know what i really look at it like this it was like god it was like or whatever you perceive because i don't really believe in religions mm-hmm. it's just i grew up catholic so i i always relate to god yeah because that's what i grew up with but i don't subscribe to any religion um it was just a situation where it was like i'm gonna gift you something beautiful if you're able to handle this fuck the situation of you being stabbed almost dying recovering let me see if you become bitter. Keep going down the path that you've been going or shit just doesn't work for you. Yeah. Or are you just going to be like relinquish all this unnecessary bullshit in your life and just be like, look, life is a gift. Heaven is on earth. It isn't after you're gone. And I'll tell you this. I 100% agree with it because hey you know some people can tell you that i saw a white light i saw all this other shit i didn't see nothing the lights went out 100 percent and all i remember is waking up to the doctor telling me hey there he is with a tube in my mouth talking about 
hey, you need to talk to your wife because you almost died. Yeah. Yeah. So. So after that, after that happened, what what did you do differently with your music? I didn't really do too much different aside from. No, okay. So what I did different was just I just went 100 percent balls to the wall and didn't give a fuck about what the fuck I was people perceived of me because at the end of the day it goes down like this look people are always going to perceive whatever they want to perceive of you all right correct and all you can do is have a slight measuring stick of what it is that you want to to perceive of you outside of that you can't do nothing let them perceive whatever they want of you and you just keep moving forward no matter what and if they're there they're there if they're not they're not you know i mean that's not your job for them to get it. You just got to be 100% yourself genuinely. What all this boils down to and how well you do in life is all intent and perspective. And if your intent is righteous and your perspective is on point as best as it could possibly be because it won't always be 100%, you're good. Word. That's it. Word. It's not complicated. Life is not complicated. We complicated as humans. And I apply that to my music because my shit is cracking right now yeah so let's talk about your music right now what's what's some of the the music you have that you're coming out with right now what are you producing so i just did a joint with my my latest one is actually a dedication to primo it's called the star in the chain nice um but that's more just my personal flowers to him but the one that came before that was dj revolution on the cuts myself on production and elemental on the raps um single before that was also uh with rock iris science and my dude tried to beat yoda who's uh marco polo's mentor marco polo from out east Hell with, yeah so uh yeah and then i got joint i've had i've had a couple joints with fashion evidence man there's a lot of people um i there's i got a single in the works right now with dj revolution i'll kill from j5 and my dude pause one so nice nice that's coming down the pipeline to and then i got a bunch of other stuff that i really can't speak on until it records word up who was uh what was the one uh studio session that you got an artist that you got on, on on your track that you were like damn hell yeah uh i would say karis one really how did that come about uh this is when i so when i went to school and i wasn't doing shit um this is stuff that i skipped was uh i spent a year or two in merced not really doing anything just have a regular nine to five that i know where one of my homeboys that i'm in school with me because there were only a couple of hip-hop heads at the time uh-huh. in those kind of schools because they didn't really offer like production programs it was just more about recording and producing yeah on a different level not a hip-hop level of production yeah. and uh he called me he's like look there's what are you doing he's like there's some studios out here if you don't like your job, just come out here. We'll make it happen and come work over here. And uh, that ended to me being in Colorado for a long time, working with him and then turned into me being in groups and producing for other people out there. Nice. Um, what were some of the groups that you uh, you were a part of? So my group, Prime Element, uh, was a group that did really well in Denver, which led me to work with Dialed People's Swan members. Uh, and everybody that I've ended up working with, um, yeah, big up to my dude, uh, obvious, big up to my dude, Cisco Rockwell. Those are my old, uh, group members. Um, we ended up doing a lot of good shit. Uh, we ended up, I ended up winning Denver through the Village Voice, which is associated with the Village Voice in New York. Uh, it's called the Westward in Denver. Um, I won producer of the year, the album won album of the year nice, for hip hop. Thank you. And um, we had like Rock Iron Science on it, uh, Defari, uh, Doja Rays, my dude Braille, Brizzy, a bunch of people. Um, it was the first time that anybody had gone for it like that. We had it all done professionally and everything. And uh, for the release party, we ended up having Rock and Defari come out with Babu. Nice. Um, yeah, man. That, that all happened there. And uh, after that, it was just, I never looked back. Your music's available where right now? If people wanted to hear it. Uh, you can go on Apple Music or you can go on... Eh, well, I'll say this. the My um, initial release called Watch the Pendulum Swing. Uh-huh. 
It's available on all platforms. Nice. Uh, Apple Music, Spotify, you name it, all the major brands. And then the rest of my other catalog is available on Bandcamp. Nice. And then what's uh, would it be under S9? Is yep, what we're S9 looking for? dot Bandcamp. Yeah, it's nice. simple. E S N I N D. And then what about for the for Apple Music? That one, the track that's on there. Same thing. Same thing. Word. S9, Watch the Pendulum Swing. We were talking earlier, and, and, and you say, as an artist, you wear many hats. Oh yeah. Talk about talk about all the different hats you you have to wear because you have to do it. I mean, it just I think it happens after a while. You know, I mean, nobody puts you on sometimes. Um, sometimes you gotta just put yourself on, and you're gonna have more success putting yourself on. Luckily for me, I was always been an artistic person, so I I do all the graphic design, I do the recording, obviously, because I'm in school. I do the production. Um, I also have a clothing line. Uh, I do all my uh, online. Uh, I do all the work online as well, and obviously the DJing as well. I can also do. I can. I also rap as well, but it's not my forte that I want to put out 100% yet. Yeah. But so yeah, I've, I've just throughout the years I learned how to do it all proficiently. So I'm self-contained, self. I don't really need a label, basically. Yeah. Uh, I'm a label's wet dream as far as like all I need is a distribution. Just let me be me. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, nice. let me do what I do and put a budget behind me and I'll make some magic, magic happen for you. Whatever it is you want, I'll make it happen. Nice. And then let me ask you this about the clothing line. Where can we where can we find your clothing at? Uh, actually, it's on. Uh, what is it? Uh, let me look it up. Hold yeah, on. your phone's not in your pocket, dog. Remember, you left your phone on this side. That's right, I did. <laughs> uh, it's on my page, actually. It's uh, if you go to my IG page, it's linked to my page. Uh, so you'll see all my designs and stuff. So I got a bunch of obviously the logo, S9 logo, uh, with the milk crate. And then, uh, but yeah, if you go to my IG page, S9 E S N I N E, you'll you'll see the link for my clothing line. And actually, this clothing line that I'm gonna, so the clothing line company that I'm coming out recently with, aside from the stuff that I already have, so I decided to LLC it because it's doing well. Um, it's gonna be called La Bodega Entertainment. Nice. nice. Um, so it's gonna encompass art, clothing lines, and everything. So, yeah. Nice. So it's nice. all associated with the stuff that's linked to my IG page now. And the IG page is S9 underscore, or was underscore? No, no, it's just ES. ES9, oh, ES9. N -I -N -E. That's oh. why people never spell it right, because it's all one word. I should have made the fucking... <laughs> I should have been smart about that, but it's all good. It's, it, I don't care. That's like, all right, man. It shouldn't, it, it's hip-hop, It bro. doesn't matter. Nobody ever gets yeah. names right. You know what <laughs> I mean? I've heard Wu-Tang Clan being called Wang-Tang Clan. <laughs> so. You'd be surprised, bro. As, as, a, as, a, as a, a platform, we get cast that send us music and the way they spell their name and oh, it's horrible you think you think you're saying we're about it. like oh shit <laughs> we're the worst it's like pronounce my name right and it's like but let me spell it horribly <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> this is making sense for us to interview yeah so you do graphic design work you do producing mm -hmm. you uh you're a dj yep you're wearing all these hats man did you think that when when, when you were a kid or, or when you started uh, when you started getting into the culture that you would be able to you would uh, level level yourself up this far up in the game no not at all it just you know for so long as most of us go through life you're told that none of that has any use right yeah till it becomes useful that's true we're a hip-hop generation right yes indeed well hip-hop generation is in power positions now so it became useful now and uh whatever everything i've done for 40 something years all of a sudden is useful so it's i have no lack of use which with anything that i want to do yeah it's almost like carte blanche you like i can do what do you want you want art you want t-shirts you want music what do you want yeah i nice. can do it but because the people that are in charge now are from my generation they understand it so the the doors become a lot easier to open but it took 40 something years of our lives to kind of get there you know what i mean i feel you i feel you which i'm fine like i don't give a fuck what age i'm at like aging number to number that's true that's true you know I mean? and especially after what i went through with my almost near death experience like i don't give a fuck yeah i'm going for it 100 wherever i'm at in age 
That's what's up. So. And then you also do have a Twitch show. Talk about that. Slobber, uh, it's a Slobber Knocker. Yes, it's a new Twitch show that I'm starting that I really want to curate 100%. It's called Slobber Knocker. It's the marriage of two of my biggest obsessions was this classic wrestling and obviously hardcore boom bap hip hop. Yeah. The thing is that people don't realize that hardcore hip hop heads tend to be into wrestling. All right? Yeah. If you watch AEW or WWE, sometimes in the front, uh, check this out. Action Bronson's theme song is for, or Action Bronson's song, an Action Bronson song is a theme song for one of the wrestlers in AEW. Uh huh. All right. Uh, Big E, that's a part of a new day on for all my wrestling fans. They know what I'm talking about. Big E is part of this group, uh, this crew called A New Day. Well, he sent me like a get well video when I the shit happened to me uh-huh. but prior to that he ended up winning the the wwe title and his attire was dedicated to below the heavens blue and exile yeah so there you go That's what's so up. why wouldn't i do a show like that you know slop knocker nice so the idea is for me to grow that show to the point where it's a podcast where i can play hardcore boom bap hip-hop and i'm talking about like hip-hop it just has to do with wrestling it's just it's like hardcore hip-hop and wrestling and marry those two things together and make it something really tangible for people to enjoy. That's what's um, I want to interview wrestlers from people like The Rock to John Cena. Yeah. All that. And because John Cena is a hardcore hip hop head. Yeah. If you guys is. don't know that, uh, his theme song is produced by Jake Wynn. His main, that I did not know. His main theme song, the one that everybody knows, that. Dun, 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 yeah, dun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, guess what? That's Jake Wynn. Are you fucking serious? That's, I never knew that. That's Jake Wynn crazy and on that if you crazy. go look at his album his homie is bumpy knuckles that's down with gangstar yeah crazy he if you go back and look at it they perform like bumpy knuckles and him perform at, at wwe shows back in the 90s really i see i never knew that late 2000s or early 2000s i was the attitude era bro i was the attitude oh era, i'm so. the attitude era, yeah, era too so. well i was a uh, i grew up with it in the 80s so yeah, i remember like hulk not, hogan on the yeah. giant and roddy yeah. piper and all that shit but like the 90s was when yeah. i was a teenager so it was like fucking suck it yeah <laughs> the crotch chops yeah yeah well i think it was like once 2000 came i was i don't know once uh um, i mean it, it blew up during that yeah. era because it was like everybody was into it yeah it became popular because it was from all my wrestling heads it's called the monday night wars it's, yeah you had yeah. wwe versus wcw yep. yep and it just had her it was just people were just obsessed with yeah it. wrestling was the number one form of entertainment in the 90s and i shit you know i'm not yeah. i'm not hyperbole speaking on that one it was literally the number one their ratings have never been matched yeah since then. i agree which i, I agree with they're you like like nine point something ten point something ratings which no one's ever gotten yeah. since then yeah or before yeah and then they were doing better than monday night football too for a while oh they were killing yeah. the monday night football which is why vince McMahon wanted to do the xfl because he was stomping the shit out of yeah <laughs> and then that shit was goofy as fuck and it didn't work out but anyways, how, how often do you do that Twitch show? Uh, I kind of do a pop up at the moment now because right I just uh, I'm trying to just really focus on trying to get everything lined up for with my music career. But I do it. I'm always online. So like if you go to uh, Twitch TV backslash es underscore n i n e, you'll see all my streams all the time. Word up. Um, I'm always so for sure. The one that I do do every week is called Thursday Night Throwdowns with my dude DJ Tense Big Up. That's my part of my dj crew the crunk brothers nice um we do thursday night throwdowns which is strictly all new school boom bap all nice. new school boom bap. i'm not talking about like shitty fucking rap from, yeah yeah yeah. i'm talking about like boom bap from now because there's plenty of it and uh we scour the internet and get the best of the best and that's what we do two hours of new school boom bap every thursday nice nice thursday night throwdowns baby and what time does that take place at uh nine o'clock um pacific standard time oh wait is it nine o'clock seven eight no no it's nine o'clock uh mountain standard time okay uh till about 12 uh a.m mountain standard time so word you do the math what it is for for pacific that's because he's in denver and that's initially his night so i go by his time period oh word up but uh yeah so I, I, what they're an hour ahead of us so something like that i don't know i always get confused something like sure. that but it, it's mountain there you'll see if you go to my ig page you'll see the times that we have so i'm always we do it every week so 
Word. What, what's, what's up with the with the mercy the well, the mercy the hip hop scene? Ah uh, man, it's shit, man. They put me on. Like I mean, I got mad folks that came out of it. You know what's crazy about this? A lot of people don't know this, um, and uh, it's tripped me out. So DJ Truly Odd, who is a well known uh, vendor here for the Beats on Yes, sir. What's up, Truly Odd? So what up, Truly? He's from Merced. He's from my hometown. Really? I never knew that. Yeah, he used to DJ at this place called CT. His mom... Oh, yeah, I won't say anything. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah, he's from, he's from my hometown. He still goes back there. You know, what's funny is I ran into him coming out of a record shop uh, one of Thanksgiving just recently. I was like, what the fuck are you doing here, dog? He's like, well, I live here. I'm from here. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, he's like, yeah, 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 I'm visiting family. I was like, oh, word. That's and so, it's really odd. If you know who Truly Odd is, that's the history of hip hop. Yes, sir. Said. Um, my dude Chozo, he was like the first person I ever like saw really do it. Go follow my dude DJ Chozo. Pick up my dude. He's one of my mentors, and uh, he was the first person, person that I walked into, and I saw like a EPS sampler and a four track, and this motherfucker made a beat, and I was like, "What is this? Yeah. This is like what you see in the movies or the videos." So. Nice. Would you, uh, what, what, uh, what do you have planned or what are you curating right now as far as hip hop goes besides your music? Uh, what do you mean? Like, how? Do you, uh, are you involved in any, like, mu- uh, DJ scenes, any events? Oh, yeah, like yeah. Oh, oh, you're talking about events or things that are coming up? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm doing this Sunday coming up. I'm doing uh, the Beats Me. I'm doing an all vinyl set. So, Word my G's. You guys sponsor it. Yes, sir. Um, Los Angeles Record Fair. Yes, sir. Official, baby. That's actually where I met you guys. Yes, sir. I remember that. It was almost like clockwork. I, like, I talked to you guys once, and it was like I knew you guys forever. <laughs> All right. So it's, it's, it's a no-brainer for me to do this. But uh, I'm doing that. Um, 27th, I'm doing... 27th of this month, I'm also doing Bakersfield at this spot called Off the Rails. I'm doing the Pete Rock versus Premiere Night. Nice. Um, and then I'm gonna come back up for the Nam show. Nice. Let me see if I can get into some of these DJ competitions. Nice, nice. Try to serve motherfuckers on decks. Nice. Show you guys that these this old man still got it in him. There it is, right there. <laughs> let me pull, ask, let pull me a ask, rocky on you guys. Let me ask you this, bro. Long term, uh, long term, short term. What are you looking to accomplish right now, man? You know what. Uh, for me having a lot of issues with this person named Kanye West, the best and simplest way is the way he answered what he wants to do. I just want to do dope shit. That's it. Word. I just want to do whatever is dope. I want to do that. Yeah. For however long I can do it, for as much as I can do it, wherever I can do it, that's all I want to do. Just do dope shit. Nice. It, money or not. Like, the money always comes. Like, this is where I tell people, like, Focus on what you want to do, and the money will come. Yeah. But as long as you focus on it 100% genuinely, as long as your intent is right, and you're not hurting anybody, and you're not hurting yourself, shit cracks for you. Word up. So that's all I care about doing. Nice. Before we close out this interview and get your mix in, mm-hmm. um, any shout outs, anything you want to close out with before we close out this episode? No doubt. Yeah. Big up to my dude, Rock Hour Science. Uh, big up to my dude, Silos, Chozo. Uh, all my Merced folks, of course, my lady, Miss Patty Z, and uh, all my hip hop heads, past, present, future, whatever, everybody that's been part of my career, no matter what, where I've been at. Thank you guys. That's because of you guys, I'm still here. Nice. And then one more time, shout out all the all the Instagram handles, the where they can find the music, where they can find the mixes, all that good stuff, brother. Uh, it's all under S nine E S N I N E on Bandcamp on ig uh on twitch it's es it's underscore nine but it's still s9 it's, it's, i kept i kept it simple and luckily enough nobody had snatched up the name so word up word up well with that being said this has been another episode of this is the way radio broadcasting live from northeast los angeles live from la hotbox studios boxer is that right is that, uh, is that right right yeah yeah yep looks just like that that's brother. it baby just like that you know what um uh so before we get off the line no no doubt go ahead i'm become a resident of you guys i know you guys hate transplants but <laughs> la has my heart <laughs> we're gonna tell you well it's not about being a transplant dog it's just about being dope 
So we'll see. We'll see right now. We'll see right now. We'll see right now. We make no promises. We're gonna see. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna learn then. If you good, if you good, we well, get the approval. If you not, then you get the fuck out of here. That's <laughs> how up. I learned. You know what I mean? Anyways, I'm just fucking around. Word up, word up. Let's go. This is the way radio broadcasting live from Northeast Los Angeles. Boxer, what's up, homeboy? Live from LA Hot Box Studios. As always, as always, we always got the dopest interviews with artists, DJs, all that good shit, MCs. And as always, this is The Way Radio right here on www.diggingdaily.com. Make sure you check out all our content. Make sure you check everything out. S9 will be having a mix. Make sure you guys check it out on the website. That'll be exclusively on the website. Stay posted for that. And as always, we are the freshest. We are the dopest. We are the one and only www.diggingdaily.com. Peace.